Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. We're dedicated to delivering quality auto parts, expert customer service, fast and free shipping, all backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. So visit us at 1AAuto.com, your trusted source for quality auto parts. In this video, we're gonna be working with the 2004 Ford Crown Victoria 4.6 liter V8. We're going to show you how to remove and replace your vehicle's alternator, which is a very important part of the charging system and keeps the vehicle's power while running. If you like this video, please click subscribe. We have a ton more information on this and many other vehicles. And if you ever need parts for your car, you can follow the link down in the description over to 1AAuto.com. Here are the items you'll need for this repair. Your battery is located at the front passenger side of your engine bay. Using an 8 millimeter or 5 16 wrench, loosen the clamp on the negative side of the terminal. Once you've removed the negative battery terminal, isolate it away from the battery so it doesn't accidentally reconnect while we're working. Using an open drive on the end of a quarter inch ratchet extension, loosen up this screw at the center of the engine cover. Lift it up, slide forward, and remove it from the vehicle. Before removing your serpentine belt, be sure that the path is indicated somewhere in the engine bay, either on the original sticker like ours has here, or if yours is missing, simply take a marker or paint pen and draw one somewhere under the hood. Using the open end drive of a 3 8 ratchet, place it into the square inlet on the serpentine belt tensioner and rotate clockwise. Remove the belt from a pulley, carefully release the tension, remove your ratchet and take your belt off the rest of the way. It's a little tricky to get it off this idler pulley here so be careful not to cut it on this piece of steel and the rest should come off pretty easily. Your alternator is located here at the top of the engine, dead center. To remove, we'll pry up a little because this connector is stuck. You may be able to do this by hand, but lift up on that tab and remove it. Then lift up on the boot for the power lead and remove the 10 millimeter nut underneath. We'll do this using a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Remove the power lead. And regardless of whether we're replacing the alternator or just removing it to get it out of our way for another job, we'll reinstall that nut on there just to make sure we don't lose it. Remove the four 10 millimeter bolts at the top of the alternator going back to the intake manifold as a stiffener. We'll crack all of these loose with our 10 millimeter socket and ratchet and remove them in the plate the rest of the way by hand. We'll also need to just pop this connector off of our power lead and lay that off to the side. Using a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet, I've used a longer ratchet here than we did before because there's a lot more torque on these. We'll remove the two 10 millimeter bolts at the bottom of the alternator. You may need a small extension to help get your socket past the water pump pulley for the driver's side lower alternator bolt. You don't have to remove the two bottom 10 millimeter bolts as these are notched on the alternator and you can simply slide it up once they're loose. Once the bolts are loose, you can lift up and slide the alternator off of them to remove it from the vehicle. Reinstall your alternator onto the studs. Reinstall the top bracket. We'll start these screws in finger tight. We'll then tighten down the backs fully Once the rear bolts on the top bracket are in place, we'll tighten down the bottom bolts. 
We'll then tighten up the two 10 millimeter top bolts and reconnect the electrical connector as well as our power lead. And tighten the 10 millimeter nut with your socket and ratchet. And reinstall the boot. Install the surf belt first around the harmonic balancer or the crank pulley. Be sure that it's seated on there fully. I'll now take the passenger side of the belt, and route it under my water pump, back up over top of the water pump. From here, it'll go over the top of my tensioner pulley. under my AC compressor on the bottom passenger side, through this tight little gap here and over the idler pulley. I'll then go to the bottom driver's side and route the belt around my power steering pump. I'll put some tension on it by hand, make sure that everything is seated properly on its pulleys, and then use the drive of a 3 8 ratchet in the square opening of the tensioner Turn that clockwise to relieve the pressure and install my surf belt over the top of my alternator before releasing the pressure and removing my ratchet. Double check that your routing is correct and that the belt is fully seated on all pulleys before starting the vehicle. Reinstall your engine cover by sliding it back over the hooks in the front placing it over the stud at the top. Reinstall the nut and tighten it down with a quarter inch drive extension. Reconnect the negative battery terminal and tighten it back down with your 5 16 or eight millimeter wrench. There's no need to crank these down, just go on there until it's nice and snug. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.